Because the charge on the capacitor plates vary periodically as a function of time, so must the electric potential energy stored by that capacitor. Now, the energy stored by the electric field in the capacitor of an, of an LC circuit is given by the following. It is equal to the square of the amplitude of charge divided by 2 times the capacitance times the square of the cosine of the product of angular frequency and time. So potential energy varies periodically. Now, since the current in the circuit varies periodically, we know that the potential energy stored by the magnetic field of the inductor must also vary periodically. So the amount of potential energy stored by an inductor depends on the current. And since the current is a periodic function of time given by sine, that must mean the potential energy stored by the magnetic field in the inductor must also vary periodically, given by the expression of the magnitude of the charge squared divided by 2 times the capacitance of our capacitor times the square of the sine of the product of the angular frequency and time. Let's look at this relationship graphically. Here we have an energy versus time diagram. And what we're seeing right here is the electric potential energy stored by the electric field in the, between the plates of our capacitor. Notice how this potential energy varies periodically, reaching a maximum value given by the amplitude of our potential energy function. Here is the expression for the potential energy stored by the magnetic field in the inductor. Since there is initially zero current in the circuit, notice how the magnetic potential energy starts off being zero. But it increases to a maximum amount, then decreases back to zero, varying periodically forever, governed by the function that we see here. If we were to add the potential energy of the magnetic field and the potential energy of the electric field, we would see that the total energy in our circuit is constant, being given by the sum of the electric and magnetic potential energies. And that constant is just the maximum value of potential energy that we started our circuit with. So this is in accordance with conservation of energy. Now let's look at the sequence of events, what's actually happening to the components in our circuit as the charge varies. So we know that energy varies harmonically between the electric and magnetic fields of the capacitor and the inductor, respectively. Recall that the source of the current in an LC circuit is the charge on the capacitor plates. Similar to how a spring block system is a mechanical oscillator, an LC circuit is an electric oscillator, oscillating at a frequency of omega divided by 2 pi, where omega is the angular frequency equal to 1 divided by the square root of the product of the inductance and the capacitance. So here, notice that when the charge on the capacitor is at a maximum, there is zero current flowing in the circuit. Pay a special close attention to the polarization of the capacitor plates. Notice how we have positive charge on the top plate and negative charge on the bottom plate and how the electric field is pointing from positive to negative. Also look at the energy bar graph to the left. It shows that our potential energy is only in the form of electric potential energy, and it's currently at a maximum. So at time t equals zero, our capacitor then discharges. As the capacitor discharges, the current in the circuit increases. The capacitor, though, 
loses electric potential energy while the inductor gains magnetic potential energy. So notice that the capacitor has fewer charges on its plates. The electric field has diminished in magnitude. But now look at the inductor. Notice how the inductor has a self-induced field, a self-induced EMF. The magnetic field induced in the inductor is pointing straight down. And that magnetic field is generated in such a way as to inhibit the change of current through it. As a result, this inductor begins to store magnetic potential energy. Now, the current continues to increase until it is at a maximum, at which time the inductor has gained the maximum amount of magnetic potential energy, while the capacitor has lost all of its electric potential energy. The magnetic potential energy in the, in the inductor then decreases as it drives the decreasing current that begins to recharge the capacitor, but with opposite polarization. So notice how in this sequence, from maximum current and zero charge on the capacitor plates, we have the inductor has the maximum amount of magnetic potential energy stored. And when that occurs, the inductor begins to discharge and look at the polarization of the capacitor now. Now the positive charges are on the bottom plate and the negative charges are on the top plate. The electric field has changed polarization as the current carries charge from the formerly positive plate to, to the new positive plate. And this current now, however, is decreasing in magnitude. And as the current decreases in magnitude, notice how the magnetic field in the inductor decreases. However, the electric field in the capacitor increases, increasing the electric potential energy. Now the current will continue until the capacitor is completely recharged and has polarization opposite to when it began. During this time, the current will decrease to zero as the inductor loses all of its magnetic potential energy while the capacitor regains all of its electric potential energy. When the magnetic potential energy stored by the inductor is zero, maximum charge will have accumulated on the capacitor plates, but with polarization opposite to the initial charge. After reaching a maximum charge, the capacitor then discharges, creating an electric current opposite to the original current direction, reversing the original process. Now notice that as the capacitor continues to discharge, it loses energy while energizing the in inductor. The current continues to increase while charge continues to leave the capacitor. Now here we see that the capacitor is fully discharged and the inductor is fully energized as the circuit returns to its maximum current. After achieving maximum current, the inductor uses its magnetic potential energy to continue to drive a now decreasing current that recharges the capacitor back to its original polarization. The capacitor finally is fully recharged after the inductor has used all of its magnetic potential energy, which is stored now on the plates of the capacitor. And notice how the polarization has returned to its initial polarization. So in the absence of electrical resistance, this process would continue forever, with charge and current oscillating back and forth harmonically.